Hi there and welcome to another PST Tuts spoon fed photoshop tutorial. I'm Gavin Steele and I'm going to be taking you through how to create a fantasy landscape photo manipulation. This tutorial is done by Laura Dana or Laura Dana. Sorry if I've mispronounced the name there. Um, great final image here focusing on um, fantasy landscape. We're going to be doing a lot of splicing and stitching together of images and a lot of masking so some great skills to pick up. All the files to a link to as normal and there's a few just along here that are um, really great photos for this kind of thing and definitely worth checking out the author's other images. We're also going to use things like these packs, sky packs, again really useful. Have a look at the author's page and, um, and check all of those out. So in Photoshop I've got a new document. It is an image size of 820 in width and 964 in height. And the first image we're going to use is this one here of our waterfalls. V on the keyboard, I'm just going to drag it straight into our document, minimize it and get it out of the way. Command T is going to bring up my free transform. It's going to let me play around with size and manipulate that image. I'm going to lock the ratio between the width and the height. Just drag it straight across. and That's going to decrease the size of the image. I'm going to move this over to the left-hand side of the image. I'm not going to worry too much about the right-hand side for now. And I'm going to give myself enough room. Z on the keyboard is going to zoom out. Enough room at the bottom so that we can add another little cliff off to the side here. And then our pool down here. So that looks pretty good for now. We're going to bring in our second image, which is this small waterfall. V on the keyboard, once again, drag that straight in. And let's minimize that out of the way. So I'm going to reduce this down to about 50%, somewhere down there. Command T, right click inside our selection and flip horizontal. It's on the right hand side. Scale it. Oops. Right click, flip horizontal, hit enter. Command T again, we're going to scale it. Lock the ratio between the width and the height. And let's just drag that straight across. Bring that down and let's move it over and zoom in and check it out. So, what are we looking for in this little area over here? Well, we're looking for this line across the side where our waterfalls are starting to fall from. We're going to come along there. We're going to drop down a little bit to about here. And then this other waterfall is going to start. So we just need to position this somewhere that kind of gives that impression of, of that falling down. So we've reduced the opacity just so we can see where we're placing it on our, on our final image. Now. That looks pretty good to me. Just about there. I'm going to increase the opacity. Click on the new mask. I'm going to create a vector mask. B on the keyboard is going to bring up your brush tool. Make sure your hardness is set to zero. Nice soft brush. And we can just start painting on that mask. It'll start to hide it up. And over here in the thumbnail, it'll show you in black what you're actually hiding or what you've used. So just going to start covering all this up. The reason we use a soft brush is it just kind of makes the blending between the two a little bit feathered. So let me just zoom out a second. Yeah, that's OK. I don't want to lose this little bit here, which I've just done there. So Command-Z is going to undo that. Command-Alt-Z can take you back a further step. Back to my brush tool. And I'm just going to zoom in again. Okay, zoom out, just making sure I've got that area. And just get a pretty good blend over here. So again, I've just lost that little bit. Doesn't matter if I lose it just a bit, because I'm going to put some sky behind there. Okay, come along here. And now we're going to go down the side of our cliff face, revealing our waterfall behind. Like so. Can get rid of all of this. And all of this. And eventually get something that looks something similar. 
to that. And it kind of already has started to tie itself in with the background with that soft brush. Just going to come again just a little bit over here. Just help that down like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next image to bring in is this one here. It's our waterfall into our pool area. And again, V on the keyboard, just drag that straight into our final image, minimize that out of the way. And we're gonna resize that and start to uh, to blend that in. So Command T on the keyboard. Let's chain the uh, ratio, bring that in. And let's start to just get an idea of where we're going to place this. Okay. Now I know I'm not going to need this top area, so I'm going to mask that out now with a brush, big black brush. And let's just get rid of this top area up here. Okay. Probably not going to need any of this stuff for now. A little bit of that grass and none of that. So, Command T again. Let's bring that down. Okay, we're just going to start to think about how this is going to flow over the side and how all of this is going to join up. So, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, something like that. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit enter. And then on that mask, I'm just gonna keep going. Make sure you're on the mask. Keep going, just bringing out these edges. Follow the waterfall down. The grass area, bring back our waterfall. Okay, and then you can see we start to get an issue with the waterfalls falling a bit short. So, V on the keyboard that tells us this our image is a little bit too big and it's a little bit too too high up, we've lost a lot of our pool there. Something like that looks pretty good. Back onto our mask. And just rework that a little bit. Pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit too far just to see where this waterfall kind of ends, just to make sure we get that area in. X on the keyboard is going to take us back to white and then just bring it back up. So, bring back these waterfalls. Again, go too far, and you know, we'll see where it brings us. Okay, that's looking not too bad. I'm still got a little concern about this little area down at the bottom left down here. So, X on the keyboard. 
just start to bring this back just to blend it in take a brush use the edge of the brush just to get that end blended okay and I'm not happy with this area here Looks a little bit too fuzzy, so brush, going to increase the hardness, decrease the size, just get this edge back. I'm going to go a little bit too far to see if there's any potpourri, it's potpourri, any grass or anything like that. There we go, we've got a little bit of grass there, that's going to help. Let's keep going too far. And then I'm going to use this line just here. So back on X on the keyboard. Thin that down a little bit more. Zoom out. Oh, that's a little bit better. Okay, so we've kind of tied together those three images there. Roughly, we're going to bring in a little thing to cover up this area over here, a little cliff. But we've tied them in pretty well, and it you know it's it's starting to look a little bit believable, even though we're doing a fantasy film that that maybe this is a man-made dam over here. These are falling in the waterfall. That's all filling up behind there, and so on. Now, I'm just going to brush out this little area over here it's too much grass yeah that looks a bit better and we've got this main waterfall coming down to the pool this other waterfall coming from here and they're all feeding into this main center point here now we need to bring in our cliff on the left hand side so I'm just going to grab that and bring that in Yep, there we go. And again, we're going to bring that in with V on the keyboard. Just drag that onto our main document. Minimize that. And we're going to play around with this. And first of all, Command T. I'm going to right click. We're going to flip it horizontally. Command T. And just scale that down. And we're going to position that over here. Now we only want a little bit of this bend to show through so something like that let's scale it down it's still a bit big it's going to be coming out here hit enter and let's have a look at how that looks and it's not bad let's quickly add a little mask again brush let's decrease our hardness on that brush get rid of the bits we don't care about I'm just going to do this quickly. I'll refine it in a second. But it's just to give me an idea of scaling this. So Okay. It's a little bit small. So a bit better okay I'm just going to move it out so we can see more of this ledge area here and bring in a touch more okay and all the time looking at how it fits in with the rest of the scene that looks pretty good right there Or maybe just a little bit lower. 
yeah that looks like that could work going around so we're going to keep that just nudge it left it's just not flush there okay and then x on the keyboard get white back up go back to our brush tool on our mask i'm just going to bring this area back in and you could have cut this out earlier but let's come back probably would have been easier if i'd done that earlier but not to worry, I'm just going to grab my pen tool. Just quickly come along here. So again, probably best to do this before you resize it. But just for speed, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to invert that selection, Command Shift I, and then on my mask, just lazily grab my brush tool, make sure it's black. Just going to get rid of all that around the edge. Okay, Command D, deselect, V, and let's just nudge that back. Like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just these little fidgety bits just to get the image looking right. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm gonna come back to my waterfall over here. Brush tool, make sure I'm on white. And let's just have a look at this, this little area here. So back to my brush tool, I'm gonna make it black. Just make sure some of that mask is filled in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're starting to get all these pieces coming together. That's looking pretty good. So we're going to copy some of our spray down here, and we're going to take it over to the right-hand side, and we're going to use it for the spray coming down here. And that'll tie in that water just touching and landing in rather than just floating in midair. So that's the next step. So, okay. Z on the keyboard. Let's zoom in onto that area. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the original um, image. And I'm going to take it from the original image. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to lasso this area here. I'm going to grab all of it because we can always mask out what we don't use. V on the keyboard and just drag that onto our document. Scale it. Flip it. Okay, and start to rotate it. Scale it a little bit. Okay, so you get something like that, or you're happy with. And then we're going to mask it. Get rid of that hard edge. Okay, 
just going to scale it a little bit more. And then just keep masking this off. Larger brush. Just use the edge of the brush. Gonna blend that in. Okay, I'm gonna decrease the opacity. Bring back some of our original color through here. Again, right down. Just gonna take a little bit of work. A little easier on the bamboo, I think. Whack them or on the mouse, you gotta keep clicking and just moving. Maybe just increase that a touch. And slowly but surely that will start to blend. like so and that looks pretty good still looks like a continuation of that water maybe it's a little bit too thin I could have just positioned that out just a little bit more but I think that looks pretty good for now it ties in you know perfectly well with the image and looks good okay I might just bring back some of this mask Just maybe to suggest that that kind of disappears behind this building and into here. Okay, that's pretty good. Oops. Okay, that's not going to work. Bring that down. Okay, Z on the keyboard, let's zoom out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It looks pretty good. Okay, next step. And for that, we're just going to bring in the next image, which is our kind of hills behind our waterfalls off into the distance. V on the keyboard, drag it straight in. Let's minimize that down. Let's come back, drag it to the top of the stack on our layer stack. Command T, resize that. Now, this is going to be quite crude, but that's going to work a treat. Um, Again, bring that, I'm going to bring it right down for now. Have a look at this top area. It's going to kind of fit in just about there. Going to drag that across. Bring that up. Bring it back down. I'm going to bring it right down and we can blend that little bit in. Yep, that looks pretty good. Hit enter. We're going to mask it again. Brush tool. Nice and big. X, change it back to black. Let's zoom in a stop and get to our brush tool. And just start to blend. Blend that in. Oops. Let's get rid of our guide there. 
Okay. So just blending in. I'm going to go too far as normal and then, you know, bring it back. Okay, so X to white, start up at the top. Just start to bring that back. And you should get a nice little blend. Going along, don't worry about those giant leaves, they all get covered up. We're just trying to create this nice little blend. So, I'm going to do a V on the keyboard. I'm just going to nudge it down a little bit more. Just looking at this distance here. That looks pretty good. Make sure our blend reaches over. Yeah, that's pretty good. And let's zoom out. Okay, it's starting to take shape. Got the steam coming up from our waterfalls. And that's all tied in perfectly, apart from this little spot down here, which I couldn't see because it's hidden behind my layer stack. So back to the brush. Again, just bring that in. You wouldn't want something like that just to ruin the effect. Yep, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Okay. I'm going to bring in our sky now. Now, if I show you this over here in the palette, in the pack you get lots of different um, skies to choose from. And we're going to be using this one here to start with. This is Sky 7 2231. So I'm just going to double click on that. That's going to bring that in for me. And I'm just going to close that down. Zoom out, lovely large images. And we're just really gonna focus on this little arm bit over on the right hand side. We need to keep you know most of this, but we're just focusing really on this bit here and seeing how that fits into the overall image. I'm just quickly gonna grab the bits we need. V on the keyboard, drag that in, and we can I'm going to leave this over on the side because you might want to come back to that sky a little bit later. Command T, lock the uh, ratio again. And let's start to position this just over um, the right hand side. Like so. And I'm going to bring up the scale a little bit more actually. Pretty good. Hit enter. We're going to mask out the areas again. So we need this kind of, I'm going to go a little bit too far just so we can see it's going to come from behind there. We want to see all this stuff in the distance. And then obviously you want to see this mountain range again come a little bit too far. And then X onto white. Let's zoom in just a touch. And just bring back that edge. If you go over the edge a little bit, it's just going to give the impression that you know it's wrapping around that mountain or that hill, make it a little bit foggy. Yeah, it's going to come along here.
Okay, and then white. Just going to get this edge back. Like so. Just trying to get a believable skyline there. That's pretty good. Let's zoom out. Okay, that's not bad. Um, I've got this big white area up here, so what I need to do is, unfortunately, is go back and I'm just going to bring this out so that that ties in bit of a pain just going to have to go back and do that masking and the same unfortunately with our sky command T I'm just going to nudge that over like so and then go back into our mask and again thank god you know you don't delete anything just mask it out um, we're going to go to B on the keyboard, white, so back to that, and just bring in, bring that edge back in. Like so. Okay, let's zoom in, have a look at that area. Okay, I'm gonna put that back to black. Now that that's changed, just go a little bit too far again. There's the edge. Back to white. And just bring that edge back. Bit of light breaking over the hills. Okay, that doesn't look too bad at all. Let's zoom out and see our our image. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, okay, next thing we need to do is we're going to bring in um, some more waterfall and play around with that. And we're going to position that in this area over here. It's a little bit empty in this area. We want it to kind of look like it's a fuller, larger uh, waterfall. So again, I'm not going to use uh, this waterfall. So I'm going to minimize that. And I'm just going to load up our original. Actually, no, I'm going to use the one from um, yeah. I'm going to use the one, sorry, from uh, the one that we just brought it in on its own, the small little one here, so I'll just minimize these, just searching through my files. And again, I'm just going to sample the area that I want to use. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool and I'm going to kind of come up to the edge, just grab that, come down, grab all of this, V on the keyboard, drag it in, nice and big. Transform it, 
that's going to go along here. So I'm going to just kind of bring it straight on. Again, just bring down the size. I'm going to want this to be about there. Okay. Again, mask it. Lots of masking. I'm not really worried about those edges. These need to be a bit smoother. Okay, and then I'm just going to uh, decrease the opacity down about 75%, something like that. And I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation, clip it to that layer, and just bring down the saturation. Click on OK even increase the opacity a little bit more of the layer okay it looks pretty good I'm just going to nudge it up and around so I get something that I'm happy with that looks pretty good and then V on the keyboard I'm going to alt click and just drag it drag it over to the side Maybe even transform it, flip it round, fill this area over here. And click on enter. And then back into the mask as we've copied the mask back to black. And just come over here. Sure, on the mask. Okay, just going to move it up because I'm losing the edge there, and then rotate it a little bit and up again. There we go. Back onto the mask, back into black on my brush just tidying up the edges a little bit okay that looks pretty good let's come back to the other one I'm going to duplicate this layer I'm going to move it in between the two alt click and that's going to apply it to that layer there and that kind of just starts to make for a fuller uh, waterfall in the background um, you can even just decrease that just a little bit so that you get it just tying in. Nicely. And we can increase the opacity. Like so. Let's zoom out. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It looks a little bit top heavy up here so I'm going to zoom in with my brush on that layer just get rid of this top bit up here and just move it all to the left a bit Just get that to blend a little bit better. OK. 
Okay, it's a little bit bluey still. So, I'm going to bring these opacities right up now. Go back in and just see if we can lighten them. That's a bit better. Same with this one. So again, just all I'm doing here is playing around the lightness, just seeing how it ties into the image just to the side of it. And click on OK. And that's starting to look pretty good. Here we are at 50%. And it all kind of ties in. It's a little bit of a harsh end over here, so I'm going to just grab, grab that one more time. Alt click it over, transform it, and then just blow it out a little bit. Hit enter, brush tool, black, just get rid of this. Right down. Reduce the opacity. Something below fifty. Again, duplicate this layer, and I'm just going to throw that over this one, and Alt, click in between the two. Let's zoom out and have a look. Okay, it's not bad. It'll do for now. I'm pretty happy with it. It kind of looks like a fuller waterfall, maybe even a little bit too full. So again, you can lower the opacity between those two. Like so. And just start to build up that kind of effect. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm just going to apply a gradient map, and that'll start to bring some of the colors together. So I head up to the top of the stack. I'm going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and Gradient Map. And I've got one already saved down here, so I'm just going to show you uh, what that looks like. So the first color is black. Let's bring all of these onto the screen. Second is a bluey green, which is OC4C5E. This creamy color is FDE2A7. And it finishes on white. And click on OK. And click on OK. Now we're going to mask out, again, this area up at the top. So nice big brush. We're really only worried about the water uh, down at the bottom here. So just going to mask all of that out. Come up, make sure we get it all. Like so, and again, because we're masking, it doesn't matter if we overdo it and go into our water like that. We can always bring it back, so just roughly Go around, then we're going to zoom in, and then change to white and our brush. Decrease the size of our brush. Just going to come around these edges. Oh, 
Okay. Then I'm going to decrease the opacity of that layer. Okay, just until we get a darkish kind of bluey green, like so. Okay, next thing to do is create a new layer. Head over to the Blur tool. Make sure you've got Sample All Layers. I'm going to zoom out. And then looking at the water down here, all we're going to do is just start to create a blurred layer over the top. Like so. And that's just going to add a little bit of movement to our water. And we're going to um, add some kind of a smoky haze just over the top layer of the water as well. And that might need just a little bit more. Well, let's bring the opacity down on our gradient layer a little bit more. Okay. Back on the blur tool. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Next thing we need to do is create a new layer. Going to pick a smooth brush, white. We're going to reduce the brush size right down for now. And we're just going to softly paint in some little white areas, like so. Let's increase our strength back up to 100. It needs to be on top. Let's move it on top and make sure we're in the brush tool. And again, we're just going to come round like so. Just drawing these in. Okay, and then we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're going to set it to around 20 odd pixels. Okay, like so. And if you don't quite get all the areas that you want to reach, just create a new layer back on the brush tool. I'm just going to come back in around here. Let's create a few more. Filter, blur. Decrease it this time. Okay, I'm going to add a few. This area here needs maybe be a little bit thicker. Yeah, that kind of looks pretty good. And then click on OK. And we get some kind of fogging going on down at the bottom. OK, I'm just going to mask out this top layer. A little bit too much mist over here. too harsh but yeah something like that looks pretty good just 
just drop the opacity of that layer as well. Okay, and it's time to take shape. Next thing we need to do is bring in our cliff with our castle on it. So I'll just grab that. And again, we can zoom in on this one. We're just going to V on the keyboard, drag it in. Then we're going to Command-T, scale it. Command T and right click, we're going to flip it horizontally. And this is going to sit along the top of this area up here, but it can stay pretty big. I'm going to reduce the opacity down, and we can start to see where, it, where it's positioned on our edge. Okay, and so we're going to be using all this greenery, this kind of green area, and we kind of want it just after that area there it's a little bit big Looks pretty good. Just going to rotate it a little bit as well. Okay, let's give that a go. Mask it out. We should all be experts at that. Okay, it's my phone just going off in the background. Let's just zoom in. Again, let's just get rid of this area around here. Okay, and then we're going to bring back our waterfall. But we need to be a little bit careful with how far back we cut off now. So just around this edge. That looks pretty good. Now this area over here, we're going to make it look like is the side of our um, bank for our little river that feeds into this area. So if I come up, I'm going to go a little bit too far again. But if I just come up along here, okay, so I've gone a little bit too far there. But as I bring that back now, it's going to make it look like, hopefully. River comes in between that point and this point here. So 
again, take a little bit too much off. Okay, come down here. So, oops. And if we zoom out, we can get the rest of it. Gonna reduce the opacity down. Just make for a better blend in that area there. Okay, now we're gonna work on just tying in this rock area. So back to our brush. If we bring it down, we can just start to blend it in like so. So I'm just going to lower the opacity again. Okay, let's have a little zoom. That looks pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not happy about this tree here. I'm just gonna go to V, select, and just see what's covering that up. So make sure you click on the layer mask. It's not that one. Hmm. I just lost that little tree down there which I wanted to keep, so let's have a quick search for that. And there it is, this layer down the bottom. So come back into its layer mask and just bring out this tree. Like so, in fact, let's increase the opacity back up for a tree there. Now that will make all the difference when we look at it from this side. Now it's a little bit pointy up here, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, again, we can just pop into uh, all the masks. And just get rid of them a little bit. That pointiness. Just level it off to the side. I guess it's just that shape there that kind of does that for us. Um, let's zoom out 
I'll have a look at the greater image. And it's starting to look pretty good. Okay, next step. And it's another sky uh, layer, so I'm going to bring in the sky. Same pack, 7, it's 2263. And we're going to keep this one open as well, just in case we might bring back um, some fog using this. So let me just bring this onto the canvas. Grab the selection tool. V on the keyboard, drag it in, minimize that out of the way, Command T, and let's scale it a bit. Okay, and we're going to hit Enter. Just position it so that's kind of somewhere in the center. And again, we're going to mask this out. So bring up your mask tool, brush tool, make sure your opacity is set back to 100. And get rid of it down here. Come up the sides. use a big brush and just use the edge of it it's going to kind of add a little smoky effect to it all like so and what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the opacity, change color back to white, and just, oops, not too hard there, just start to bring back some of the sky down around these areas down here. Just going to add a little bit of fog, like so, like it's come rolling in from the hills. Next thing we need to do is get our picture of our castle. And that's the image we've used on another tutorial before. Um, so just quickly, I'm going to increase the size of that and zoom in. And just really, really quickly with my pen tool, I'm just going to go around that. Like so. Oops. Okay, make it a selection, V on the keyboard and drag that in. Let's minimize that, free transform this, Command T. And let's think about where we're going to stick this. We're going to stick it somewhere in the middle. And that looks a pretty good size. Just going to bring down the opacity. Yeah, it's going to be a rather large castle right bang in the middle of our of our image. Okay, maybe even a little bit bigger. Let's just see. No, that looks pretty good actually. Let's zoom in. Yeah. Bring back the opacity. And then again, I'm just going to go around it with the pencil now in a bit more detail. But again, fairly quickly. Like so. Spacebar always great, helps you move around. Alt the end of your 
uh, pen tool if it's going to create a crazy line. You wouldn't really want to create this many points, but just for the sake of the tutorial. Gonna grab a little bit of the land and then some of this water. So I'm not quite sure how much of that I want to use yet, so we start masking it out. Okay, and we're gonna come right in. Right click, make a selection, inverse selection, command shift I, and just hit delete, deselect, let's zoom out. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good. Bring up our mask, our brush, our black uh, color, and let's see if we can get this position right. Bring the opacity up to 100%. edges right, tie that area in there Let's zoom in Okay, going to bring down the opacity now as my belly growls, just to help this area down here. Fade into there. Like so. Let's have a look at that. That looks pretty good. Yep, everything kind of ties in well. Could be a little bit large, but for now, we're just going to carry on. Looks looks okay to me. In fact, why don't I just do that? Just bring it down a touch. Zoom back in just to show that you you know you can do all of this. And then just play around with the position again, V on the keyboard. And it all still works, ties in comfortably, which is great. Okay, next thing we need to do is apply um, hue and saturation to that. So we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation. I'm going to mask it or clip it to that layer. Click on OK. We're going to set that to 7, minus 65, and 0. Okay, click on OK. That's just going to darken that. And then another layer. And we're going to do levels. Clip that. And we're going to set that to 10, 1, and 233. 
click on OK, it's going to bring out some of the sharpness in the white areas. We're going to go back and do another layer hue saturation. Again, clip it. And we're going to set that to 13. One, oh, actually 13, 11, and minus 9. And then click on OK. It's just adding little highlights and adjustments to the color, tying it into our background. And I think we'll do one more layers, um, adjustment layer levels. Click that. And let's just bring that in again. Bring that down to 97, something like that. Bring this down to around 240. Okay, let's zoom out. And it just starts to tie that into that top area of that image. Okay, next thing we need to do is bring in, I'm not happy with this area down here in the tutorial, so he's provided a um, an alternative to this wall. And it's uh, another file, and I'm going to bring that in. And that's this large file over here. Okay, V on the keyboard, drag it in. Command T, scale it, bring it right down. Don't want to auto select the layer. Again, let's bring that down. And we're just looking at this area here, replacing this area going across. So that's a little bit small. And that looks like it could just fit the bill. And we're going to mask out that area, brush, make sure you're on black, make sure you're on 100%. Okay, so I'm going to go, it doesn't matter if I go too much, I'll bring it back. that let's just bring this back whoops okay that looks a little bit better focusing on these stairs Let's get rid of this top part. Okay. Good. We're going to go back to our castle layer. Just notice this a little bit over here. Yeah, that looks a lot better down there and might just lower the opacity just to tie in that darker color behind. And that just fits in a little bit better. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is bring in our statue. So again, just roughly with the pen tool, just going to go around here. Okay. 
like so, make it a selection, drag it on, scale it. I think, you know, one of the hardest things about this tutorial is actually sourcing all of the images for the idea that you have. So it's pretty cool that we get all of these in the tutorials. Um, I'm going to flip her horizontally and rotate her a little bit. Bring down her opacity. There we go. Zoom in and have a look at where her hand sits on that rock. I think that's going to be pretty good. Okay. And then the pen tool. We're just going to start here. around the arm around the fingers Okay, and when we get down to the dress, I'm going to keep going past here, just to keep some shape. I'm going to come off the bottom. And come back in here, right click. I'm going to make a selection, Command Shift I, invert it and delete the rest, and Command D, select. So that's a quick selection, but it's done the job. V on the keyboard, just going to nudge it down so it looks like she's resting perfectly on our ledge. Yep, she looks pretty good there. Just going to move the other images out of the way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is this area down here is not quite right, so we're going to mask that out. Like so. She looks pretty good. You might want to have, maybe have her a little bit smaller, maybe have her um, a little bit more over to the right, so you can see a bit of the arm. We can scale her down a little bit, bring that back up. Again, just bring that in a bit. It's all up to you about where you know you want to have her sitting, go back into our mask, brush, get rid of this area at the top, Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. 
Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to play around with this. We're going to start changing the colors and getting it to blend a bit more. So Command J twice is going to duplicate that. Control J on a PC. And so we've got two two layers there. We're going to set the first one is going to be overlay. And the second one is going to be multiply, like so. And we're going to reduce uh, reduce these down just a little bit. So the multiply we're going to bring down to about 50%. So we get something like that. And then we're going to clip these. So Alt, clip that, clip that. Whoops like so. So these two should be clipping this area here. So it's only applying those modes to that area. Okay, I made a little bit of a mistake there. I'm going to grab these two layers that I duplicated the statue and all I've done is I've duplicated the wrong layers. We're going to come back down to our cliff layer, which is this one here, and we're going to duplicate, we're going to duplicate that twice. Then I'm going to grab those two, going to bring them up, stick them above our statue, Alt, and then add them like so, Alt again, and that's going to mask them to this, this layer. We're going to set the first one to a uh, overlay, and we're going to set the next one to multiply. And we're going to bring this down to about 50%. Maybe just a bit below 50%. You can see that we now have our statue starting to take the same kind of blend as these layers. But that we've missed the head. So I'm going to press V on the multiply layer and just drag it up. Command T. And I'm just going to scale it down. Just so it covers all of our statue and the same with this layer command T move it over a bit and hit enter and now we get our statue kind of blending in with the background and again we can just reduce opacities or increase them depending on how you want it to look but I think that looks pretty good just going to make it a little bit lighter. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is create a new layer. We're going to go over to our clone tool. Nice and big soft brush. You can even use some of these patchy uh, kind of grungy brushes. And I'm going to select some of the greenery over here. I'm going to set it to all layers. So I'm going to select this area over here. Zoom in, go back to our clone tool, and I'm going to add little bits of green. Like so. Again, just resample. Double check where you're sampling from. Go too overboard if I'm doing here, but there you 
can always erase any of these little bits. They just go a step just over the the statue and then zoom out. And that's gonna start to help that, you know, just blend in that little bit more. Okay, starting to look pretty good. And just to tie that area in, it's a little bit too sharp and in focus, we're gonna bring in our sky again. And be on the keyboard. So yeah, I'm just gonna bring that in, this area down here, just scale it down a little bit. Like so. And then we're gonna mask that. And we're gonna be harsh on the top and around this side here. Even down in here. And then we're gonna reduce the opacity right down to about 30%. Don't want to lose that little bottom area. Okay, and just bring that up like so and just take a little bit out each time we're going to keep that little bit of fog which is going to look pretty cool and now we can work on the overall kind of um, color of the image so at the top of that stack we're going to go to layer new adjustment layer and we're going to go to gradient map and again I've got this pre-saved hopefully down here and it's quite a complicated one it starts on black we go to a dark brown 513B3D. B3, B3, B3 then the middle is a light brown 957B60. Got that same color 957B60. And then we finish with white and click on OK. That's going to give this huge tint. Let's zoom out to our image. And then we're going to bring the opacity right down to just around 40%. So it just starts to come in like so. And then we're going to go to a photo filter. So layer, new adjustment layer, photo filter. And we're going to set that to color. Keep all the defaults. Click on OK. And then we're going to do Command, Alt, Shift, and E. And that's going to create a brand new layer based on our layers down here. With that layer, we're going to go to Blur, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we're going to set that down to about 5 pixels. Click on OK. And then we're going to set it to Soft Light. And then we're going to play around with the opacity of that layer. If you keep it at 100%, it all looks like soft and kind of mystical. And again, if you bring it down to zero, it brings back your hard edges. So you want somewhere around 50%. I like mine fantasies to be fantasies. So I'm going to bump mine up a little bit. Maybe around 70 for me. That looks fine. Okay. And then we can add some more cloud if we want. Um, up at the top here, but I think it works pretty well. I might just bring a little bit of cloud over um, the castle. So again, I'm just going to drag that in, minimize that, and look for a nice foggy bit. Maybe these bits over here. Mask it out. Brush again. Set it to 100%. So, and then 
reduce the opacity right down. that I'm just going to drag that across again on that new mask So, okay, and then once we've done that, we're going to do another adjustment layer. This time, we're going to do hue and saturation, we're going to set it to zero twenty eight. And zero. And again, we can bump that or you know reduce it. I think that's okay like that. Layer, new adjustment layer, photo filter. This time we're gonna select our filter with a warm filter set to 85. Click on OK. I'm just gonna bring that down just a touch, this layer down just a touch like so and then we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer curves and we're going to play around with our curves quite like that, looks pretty good but Let's go with an output of 178 and 188. And that just gives a real slight little curve in there. I'm going to bring it down just a couple more. I like, like it to be a little bit darker. Click on OK. And there you have it. That's our tutorial. Lots of masking, lots of blending in of different layers, but you get a pretty cool fantasy image in the end. Uh, don't forget to check out the tutorial over at PST Toots. And thanks again. I'm Gavin Steele and hope to see you back here pretty soon.